Hey everyone, this is Darius from The Shot Caller and I'm sitting here with Memento from Rocket with your third win out of four games. Impressive. Congratulations. Thank you. So you just beat the Unicorns of Love as well. You beat the likes of uh, G2. Mm -hmm. Who is there to stop you guys? I don't know, Vitality are looking pretty confident, but I think we can beat them as well. Uh, who's going to stop us? I don't know. The only one who can stop us is ourselves. Like if we start inting hinting ourselves then we're probably gonna lose so i think no one can stop us except ourselves so that's a next level strategy not int yeah exactly not inting you actually win a lot more games if you don't int surprisingly uh, yeah, no. yeah i know i know it's pretty surprising man in, in my solo queue everyone just runs it down mid and they think they still win i mean sometimes you do win. <laughs> it depends you have to int in the right time <laughs> Uh, well, uh, so in general, right, um, Rockcat was met with a lot of people doubting you guys. Mm. Um, you know, you came straight from Challenger but uh, didn't rejoin Schalke. Um, why did you go with Rockcat specifically? I mean, when I looked at the offers I had, I had like some, some offer that was like, you know, decent players, pretty good. Uh, we could probably grow as a team. But I was more looking at people with potential who would want to prove themselves. Like people who, like me, myself, who got relegated. Hiku got relegated. Noshkaren is a rookie. Uh, Profit also got relegated, but he's also really motivated. And also with Blank. And I thought about the team atmosphere, how it would be. So the other offers I had was like, okay, one month, I'm going to play really good with these guys. But it's a four-month commitment, or three months, I would say. So I'm looking at like the long term, who could grow the most. And I looked at Rocket. And I really like the lineup. It would be a nice atmosphere, and also we would all be able to grow with each other. And we could also be honest with each other because no one really has like a big ego or anything. So you can be straight up with everyone and just point out the mistakes and improve together as a team. We've also somewhat seen that with uh, some other teams where uh, you know people join top tier teams, and then at the end of the day, like Fnatic are struggling right now, G2 are struggling right now. It probably is a factor for some of the players on those teams, the amount of pressure they get, and they already had from going into the season because they knew they had to win pretty much all of the games. Was that something that benefited you guys in the way that you didn't have the same pressure as, say, Fnatic or Misfits or G2, I say? I mean, it definitely feels better to be the underdog than the... Is it overdog, you see? <laughs> I mean, that, that would make sense, no? Yeah. But I mean, uh, if you're expected to lose, you don't really have anything to worry about. There's no expectations on you, so it's a lot easier to play the game like this. But also, I think people are looking a bit too serious about this best of one thing. I think if it was a best of three, I think G2 and Fnatic could probably pick up a lot more wins because these teams are really adaptable in a best of three and they can even, oh, wow, okay, that's why we lost. We did this draft mistake and, oh, okay, we just, we should not do this next game. And they adapt and overcome. Because I remember in Giants uh, last split, we won like against Misfits first game and Fnatic and like all the first games, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we just lost the next two. But if it was like that, then we would be rank one, you know, <laughs> even though we got relegated. So I think... Uh, People, uh, teams still need to learn how to play best of one. So people, people are still learning. Shouldn't judge the, yeah, well, former top tier teams. So the best of one system kind of skews the the public image they have. They're actually much better as a team, but the popular best of one system kind of mm -hmm. screws them over. I mean, I wouldn't say it screws them over. At the end of the day, all teams have to, you know, adapt to the system, yeah. and it's no one else to blame but themselves. But I think, like, if you're judged with scrims, you play, like, six scrims a day, you know? And uh, throughout the weeks, like, 24 scrims, you know? And then you come to LCS and play one game. And maybe you only, in scrims, maybe you hit the first game or something, and then you play really good the next two games. But that's why it's kind of hard to judge immediately how good every single team is from these best of one. Okay. Very reasonable. Now, with the, with the current jungle meta, We've seen a Jack's jungle from you right now. <laughs> Why one? Is he just that good? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we didn't practice any Jacks at all, you know. It was the same with Zach, but yesterday I was like, I just played some solo queue with Jacks, and I was like, hey, just jump is pretty fun, you know. <laughs> and we ended up like banning a, sh a shit ton of junglers this game. I think we banned Jarvan. There was Jarvan was banned. Kazik was banned. Mm. Uh, Sejuani was banned. Like both both teams banned junglers, and so after the. the <laughs> After the draft, I was like, wait, what, what is my champion pool now, you know, what do I pick? <laughs> and uh, I was like, uh, you know, guys, I've, I've been playing some Jackson's solo queue. I think we could play this game. And I was like, okay, we trust you, man. And so I just <laughs> locked it in. <laughs>
and it seemed to work pretty well. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You did a uh, decent amount of damage and um, came in at surprising moments, exactly what yeah. you're supposed to do as Jack. So, yeah, good job. <laughs> I guess your teammates are pretty proud of you as well. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so, I interviewed Norskaren last week and uh, asked him about Brom. And apparently, there's a meme going on at Rocket <laughs> <laughs> that I mean. your communications, right, your shot calling, <laughs> is basically like telling Norskaren. Just hit them once, you're Brom. They, they, they just die, you're just Brom, you just kill oh, them. It's, it's, uh, it's Norskaren's shot calling, man. Like, he, he plays Brom, you know, he's, like, this guy's just sitting there in, in team comps. If everyone, anyone listen to our team comps, he's like, he's just screaming right click, right click, right click, right click when he's playing Brom. Like, he's just screaming right click all the time, you know. Like, he's li micromanaging the entire team, man. Like, he's so insane. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, we figured out that Brom is, like, really broken, I would say. It's just kind of a meme, but it's also kind of true, man. Like, if you get tagged once by Brom, you know you're dead. <laughs> just lie down and die. There's no point in playing. <laughs> so, yeah. Might as well not blow flash, I guess. Uh, yeah, might as well just die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you heard it from him, guys. If you are in solo queue and you get hit by Brom, just, just lay down and just accept your fate, I guess. No counterplay. No counterplay. Except for maybe cleanse, but you only have that. No, it don't matter. There's nothing. Don't even try it. <laughs> So would you recommend banning Brom the entire time? I've been wondering, why haven't pe teams been banning Brom against you guys? Well, I'm not sure. I think people maybe don't respect us enough. Or maybe they don't consider... I mean, Brom is obviously strong, but I mean, he's not that brutally broken. No. <laughs> but he's still like a strong pick. And I don't know. I think uh, even if they banned Brom, we wouldn't have any issues. So it wouldn't matter, I think. So I have to take you back down trip, uh, a trip down memory lane. Mm. Now, last year in Spring Split, you guys had that one series against Vitality. I think we all know what we're talking about here, yeah. the, um, the remade game and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been wondering, because I was able to talk about, uh, with Steelback after the game, and he was actually like, yeah, I feel really bad. I think mm -hmm. we should have lost that game and Giants should have won. Um, are those moments for a professional player that stick with you or that still affect you in some ways? Or do you just rub them off after they happened, essentially? I mean, personally, for me, it doesn't really stick with me because I, I don't plan to live on the, uh, like, in the in the past, you know? Mm. Like, I don't care about the remake or anything. But I think for other players, it kind of hit them pretty hard. And they... Because the thing is, if you go back to the story, we had... We're all a rookie team like back then and no one had no idea how to play the game and for like a whole month we were just inting in scrims all the time and after a month we took like a four day break and we realized okay this this is not working we're doing something wrong everyone's just trolling in scrims mm -hmm. and we started like improving everyone started watching out the k vods and just playing really serious and we improved really a lot started winning scrims that, at that time and then we went really confident against vitality and og and we were talking about like yeah, we're going to do our best and show that we have actually improved, that we're not like a bottom tier team anymore. So we go into Vitality with a pretty good... Uh, we played pretty good, I would say. It was We played yeah. a lot better than expected, and it went pretty good. And then they paused for like 30 minutes, and... But for me, you know, I, I don't... I always realized that I can't really be focusing on something that already happened, so I have to focus on next game. But I think for my teammates, it kind of hit them a bit harder, and they couldn't regain the focus. So after we lost that, uh, people kind of lost faith, like in the team, mm. and also it kind of hit them pretty hard mentally. And I think a lot of a lot of my teammates, and including myself, lost a lot of motivation after that. But I don't want to say that it relegated us, because mm. in the end we were just really bad players and a bad team, I would say. Okay. Well, that's some some wise words, some reflective words on on uh, at that well, time. It is in the past, of course. Though. Yeah. Uh, of course, there have been, you know, some memes. Uh, I saw Alicus on Twitter the other <laughs> day. Like, his pinned tweet yeah, is yeah, still yeah. the thing. Like, yeah. so many memorable moments in League of Legends. You know, the, the Ambition Dragon Steel, this yeah, play, yeah. the Vitality remake that got <laughs> Giants relegated, you know. Oh, uh, well, but yeah, interesting to see. Of course, Giants are back in the LCS. You are back in the LCS. Yeah, and so both of you are kicking ass right now. Both of you yeah. are three and one. F does it feel good to see your old orc, your first orc, to survive that way? Yeah, I'm happy for them. It's nice to see them uh, actually coming, climbing back into LCS, even though despite all the expectation, I would say, like, oh, these guys won't even make playoffs or anything, mm -hmm. including myself. I even thought so myself, of course. Uh, but it's nice to see them coming back into LCS, and they seem to become a better team now. Well, I can't wait. 
for the matchup. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really excited to face them. I think we face them, is it next week or... I have actually yeah. no idea when we face yeah, them. Yeah, I believe you face them next week. Actually. It's first them and game, I Vitality, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. I think it's then. the first game and then the next one is Vitality on yeah? Saturday. Pretty sure. Holy. 90% sure. I'm <laughs> really excited then. Okay. Well, I think all of us are. Is there anything you would like to say to the Rocket fans? Uh, thank you guys so much for supporting us. It's uh, been a pleasure. We really couldn't uh, do it without you. And all the Reddit, uh, our Reddit guys saving us, man. Like, uh, he's just trash talking every single team, and uh, we just have to perform, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> He's putting yeah. up the pressure. Yeah, like, this guy's just pressuring the shit out of us. So, uh, I mean. If you die, guys don't perform, yeah. he's, you know, he's getting the negative karma, and nobody yeah, wants that. No. So. <laughs> but everyone still loves the Reddit guys, so <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, thank you so much for supporting us. We won't let you down. Okay. Awesome. This was Darius from the Shot Call. I hope you guys had a good time watching this interview. See you guys then. Bye bye.